also today I say that a lot don't I all right so we have this custom racing seat that is just way too vertically aligned with the you know what I'm saying Jesus I can't talk this morning it's finally warm out but it's still kind of cold so I'm not really feeling it you ever not really feeling it that's me today so yeah I get to re-engineer the slider brackets on these seats and hopefully make them work the way they're supposed to and still retain the functionality of the sliders so that you can remove the seat. I know that's not something that you would normally need to do, but it's a very convenient thing to be able to do. Definitely don't want to weld it down. I want to be able to remove the bolts here and slide it forward and then remove the bolts in the back, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that with the way the thing is set up so I think what I'm gonna have to do is completely re-engineer the entire slider system or make kind of like a tab in the back with a hook so the back slides into the hook and just locks in and then bolt down in the front obviously that will eliminate the sliders but it's going to lower the seat the amount that I need and also tilt the seat back because I'm literally sitting vertical and it's super uncomfortable and I just really don't like that. So today, that's what I'm gonna be doing. 20 inches. My shoulder is really killing me. All right, so somehow, I have to rearrange all of this so that it'll tab in the back and bolt down in the front. That's the plan anyway. So what we have is a couple of pins in the back basically. Instead of the tabs and hooks, the pins are going to drop down into the original boat holes. So these pins will go into these two holes. And again, lateral movement is the problem with racing seats. You don't want them to slide forward or backwards, obviously. So now the pins will drop down in there and lock, keeping you from going side to side and front to back. What's gonna keep the seat from coming out, you might say? Um, the weight of my own ass and the fact that I'm gonna be strapped down to the frame of the car with the racing harnesses. So the harnesses are holding me down, which is holding the seat down. They'll also be bolted in the front. So the seat may wanna move up and down like this, but it's not gonna allow it to tilt at all because of these bolts and the fact that the pins are going in at a vertical angle like this. These bolts will have to literally be removed because of the way they come in at an angle like this and these pins come in at an angle like that so then the seat can lift out upwards that way but it can only do that if these bolts are removed and the harnesses are unstrapped and the weight of my own body is out of the car so hopefully this works now the hardest part with any fabrication or custom job is to put it in take it out put it in take it out put it, it's just it's like sex or dating yeah it's like dating, non-stop adjustments and rechecks, making sure that you've got your measurements right. Otherwise, once you weld it into place and then you decide that you don't want that weld there, you literally have to cut it back off, remeasure everything. It's just a pain in the ass. So to any future welders or fabricators out there that are trying to do custom car stuff, that is the lesson of the day. Measure 50 times, cut slash weld once. Otherwise you're gonna be cutting and welding all day. Back in Western times, you used to judge a man based on whether he could shoot a gun or ride a horse. I think in this day and age, I've definitely come to the understanding that if you can't weld, you're not a man. But just like with most things, anybody can learn. I think with this whole YouTube thing, the hardest part for me has been remembering to just leave the camera going. I mean, you can always edit this stuff out later if it's stupid or you say something you don't like or whatever, but you can never capture footage after the fact, if that makes any sense. Kind of like the measure twice, cut once kind of thing. So you can't cut footage that you didn't take. And if you don't shoot the footage, then nobody knows. I mean, you could have done the most amazing thing in the world, said the coolest or funniest stuff, and no one would ever know because you didn't capture it. Just like I've always hoped as a kid that one day we'd have GoPros and iPhones and 
you know, just cameras on sunglasses so you can capture everything. I see a future that one day we have cameras literally that are just able to constantly record. We're not restricted by these power consumption rules of the elites and keeping us from being able to do stuff because electricity and gasoline is so profitable. I hope that there's kids out there that are watching, very young children that are, are four or five years old and they have their own iPad or iPhone. And I hope that that inspires them and gives them the ability to think so far ahead and so far outside the box that one day we do have the ability to be freed from power and money and all of these problems we have because of it. And I don't just see the benefits of, you know, being out of the power constructs of the elites and the way they put us into control, but I hope that you know, it, it inspires us artistically and spiritually and societally. Societally? Is that a word? Okay, it's going in. I see such a great future for mankind and for this planet. I really think that the children of this society and this generation have an amazing set of tools at their fingertips to do those things that all the great thinkers of history have imagined for us, you know? All right, enough of that. Back to welding. So now I have to take these stock seat brackets where they mount in the front I'm going to add on some tabs so that I can bolt them to the original seat and that will give me some adjustability. Put them back in the car, I'll tack them into place, pull them back out again, remember measure 50 times, cut once, and that will give me some adjustability in where they are positioned and then once they're pulled back out I can final weld them and then put the seat back in. If you guys haven't watched the movie Idiocracy, I highly recommend it. If nothing else, just to, you know, like crappy parents or shitty neighbors, just to give you an idea of how not to be. It's a great movie. I hear they're coming out with a part two, but I digress. Let's get back to work. We have our two seat tabs. These will get bolted to the bottom of the seat, and then the seat will sit down on top of these stock bolt mount locations and then I'll put a tack on them, a couple of tacks to hold them in place, pull the seat back out, and then I can finish weld these, and we'll go from there. Just a quick little note about welding. Ow, that's hot. It gets hot. On a side note, if it's got a kind of like a brassy color to it, or even a um, real shiny silver color that doesn't want to rust, that's normally zinc coated. There's also galvanized steel, which is the silvery stuff. That stuff needs to be ground off completely in the area of the weld. And even then, there's gonna be some gassing that comes off. If you see a green flame or blue flame coming off of your weld, that is the zinc or the galvanized coating being vaporized. Not only will it penetrate the weld and cause a crappy weld that will break eventually, that gas is highly toxic. A lot of people have gone to the hospital with flu-like symptoms, and that was caused by the fact that the galvanizing was getting into their lungs and making them sick. There's a couple of different ways to combat this. You can grind the metal completely free of the galvanized coating or the zinc coating. That's a pain in the ass. I usually just grind it off of the area that's getting welded, but then there's still some kind of gassing off that's going to occur. That smoke needs to be blown away, clear of the weld, so either weld outside on a nice breezy day, or if you have to be indoors, make sure there's ventilation and there's a fan blowing directly across your welding area. That'll prevent most of it, but unless you have on a respirator, you're still going to get some of that gas. An old welder's trick is once you're done welding for the day, drink an entire glass, probably about eight ounces, the size of a Coke can, an entire glass of whole milk. You know, the red cap, vitamin D, whole milk, not the lightweight stuff. But you definitely want to drink a whole glass of eight ounces of milk. Otherwise, I don't recommend drinking milk anyway. I think it's the only thing that milk is good for is preventing galvanized poisoning. I've welded before I knew this and was welding some galvanized steel and got pretty ill. I mean, I felt like I had the flu. I was real weak, real nauseous. Uh, I felt like I had a fever. And then I drank a glass of milk on a recommendation of a friend and immediately felt better. Tip from the pros, I'm not a pro, but I knew one, and um, he recommended drinking a glass of milk, and it totally helped, so, a little pro tip. Hopefully you guys aren't getting annoyed by all the talking. And if you are, I don't really care. Hmm? I'll show you guys what I'm talking about, as far as the mounting goes. So what we've got here now is the stock 
floorboard mounts are in place just as if they were going to be bolted in with the seat and then as you can see my brackets I just made sit down right on top of the stock floorboard mounts so now what I can do is tack those in and then pull them back out and then we'll final weld them on the floor pretty simple stuff all right so we get the welder all set up ready to blast on these a good ground is 90% of the weld. If that ground isn't good, then this weld is gonna be crap. You also wanna keep your ground as close to the weld as possible. That way you get nice, good penetration. And that is the most important thing in life, penetration. Ah, 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 all right, moving on. It should be enough to hold in place while I pull these back out, take them off, finish weld them over on the bench or the floor or ground or whatever. So we've got them all tacked into place. Now I can pull these off. I can put some fat welds on them, bolt them back in. The seat should be fine then. One day I think I'm gonna make a video of just all of the cuts that I have to cut out of me moving cameras and setting up cameras and readjusting the cameras. But I don't think anybody on the internet really appreciates how much work goes into just getting the shot. Because again, you can't edit anything you don't shoot. You have to get the shot. While we wait for that to cool, another little side note, something you guys probably don't appreciate on the internet, especially on YouTube videos. When I'm working, normally I have music playing, but since I've started this whole YouTube channel, you can't listen to music while you're working or doing whatever you're doing because it'll obviously go over the video and every time you cut, the song itself is gonna get cut. But the most important part is that the whole point of YouTube is not only to share our experiences and our reality with other people, but to make money off of it. I mean, what's the point in spending all this time and effort and thought and artistic process just to not get paid for it? And I know it's not a lot of money compared to TV or cable or movies, but it's something and it helps pay the bills. It helps make it worth our time. But if we put music in the background, we can't monetize the video. So we have to put music in after the it's not copyrighted. So we're actually supporting a lot of musicians that otherwise wouldn't get their music out. So that's kind of cool. But all of this time, like right now, I could be listening to, you know, having the radio blasting and jamming out and making whatever I'm making or creating something, but I can't. This is literally what I have to listen to. It's just this and my own voice all day long and a lot of people are asking me why am I always shooting my own video why don't I have somebody else holding the camera for me why don't I have helpers assistants whatever it's because everybody else works day jobs I'm the only person that I know that doesn't have a day job so I'm here alone most of the time working on something doing a project for someone welding in a muffler or whatever it may be while they're at work doing their day job and that's sad to me that people have to do that but the world's got to work things have to be done blah 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 but you know just a little tip for you guys when you thumbs down a video or you put negative remarks in the comments you don't see all the bullshit that we have to go through just to make a stupid little five or 10 minute long video for you guys to enjoy and you know if you wanted perfect video and you wanted beautiful actors and actresses and elaborate scripts you'd be watching hbo but you're not you're on youtube killing time at the dentist or waiting in line at the dmv or whatever you're enjoying a little five minute long video that someone spent a lot of time and effort and a lot of their a lot of their heart went into it and uh you know, it's just kind of disheartening when people so quickly and easily these days spread negativity and hate. So just try and keep that in mind that everybody's got their own problems and their own demons and they're all going through their own shit. And uh, everybody has a day job that they're struggling with. Everybody has girlfriend issues and boyfriend issues and pet issues and health issues and uh, negative comments aren't helping at all. They're actually hurting most times. So try and be positive every bit you can because the world's gonna be as negative as it can to you 24 seven. All right, throw a little primer on there just to prevent the rust. We're gonna bolt them back on and put the seat in and hopefully I'll be at a little bit better driving position than I was before. We'll see.
I totally put those in on the wrong side. That's the way it goes sometimes. Stick it in, take it out. Stick it in, take it out. Just like dating. The seat is now in a much better position. I'm not sitting up completely vertical. My head's not touching the ceiling. I like that a lot better, actually. Feels nice and straight. Should be good. So, hopefully you've enjoyed season four of Wayne's work and looking forward to season five. We have this four-wheeler that I'm gonna be turning into a shopping cart. And what else? I think we're going to be doing a bash bar on Garrett's MR2 for drift season. Um, I mean, lots of stuff. Maybe even finish the mannequin finally, art project. But um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate all the likes and comments and support. Definitely share on Facebook, all the different places. Tell your friends, make sure they come and watch. And then uh, be prepared for next season.